Hi guys, I'm Morella and welcome to the channel and this week we're talking all coffee and for this I invited my friend Rafael who's a professional barista from Some Things Awesome and um, who's going to talk to us about well, what's, what's the best way to make coffee and how you should prepare your milk for a good milky coffee. So, hello. Hi. How are you? This is exciting. This is exciting. I've never actually spoke about coffee on camera. Which no? Is now. And actually, no, no, no. I actually have a video. But it's very much mocking customers on, on, a, on a barista sort of side. Okay. Which is interesting. But I've never actually taught someone how to make coffee on camera. So this is exciting. Okay. Well, it's exciting for me as well because this is the first time I do this kind of video. So. Let's do it. Let's all right. Do it. Okay. So the first thing is how to make a good black coffee at home what would you say okay um, well making making coffee at home can be can be a task and a half right uh, I would say you want to avoid instantaneous coffee as much as possible yeah um, I mean then again I'm not mocking anyone's preference if for some reason you prefer instantaneous coffee that's what you used to drink go for it if you like V60 if you have like an actual coffee machine at home whatever it is that's how you like it go for it but do listen to what, we, what I'm gonna say and maybe try it out see if that works better for you or not and we can go from there now to make a nice black coffee now this is exciting that's that's quite a there's quite a few ways um, I do believe there's a lot of people out there that still use the, like the old French press yeah machine yeah uh, seen, I wouldn't have it and I wouldn't have it either yeah, I wouldn't have it um, the reason is it's, it's very inconsistent I know for a fact that I actually researched this. Some of the biggest baristas in the world are actually using it. Really? But, yeah. But here's the thing: they can control every single aspect of the coffee that goes in there before they even extract anything. So they can get a decent coffee out of it. Anyone that doesn't have that understanding, they'll have the biggest difficulty on getting something that's actually good. Most of the time, what will happen: it will be super bitter. It will be incredibly harsh to drink. It will just like hit on the side of your mouth here. It tastes like chemicals. I, I, I wouldn't have it. That's easiest ways, to, easier ways to make coffee at home. That's what I would go for. So, if I had to choose on how to make coffee at home, I'd go for a V60. Okay, so what's a V60? Because I never heard of it. So V60 is a very cheap, very easy way, and to make coffee at home. And even better, if you have friends around, it's a very like it has showmanship to it, right? You can okay. make it look very. Wow, when it's really just you pouring water over coffee. What a V60 is, it has a, it's sort of like a uh, capsule, I guess you'd call it. Yeah. Um, it's sort of like a funnel, right? It has a funnel that you pop uh, on top of a container where your coffee is going to go into. Uh, what that funnel does is it's made to have one of those, um, what's it called, a paper filter. Yeah. Like something you'd use on like, let's say, like an old school American coffee machine. Yeah. Um, it goes on top and it has small sort of ridges around the funnel that drive the water down. Okay. Now, what does that do different than anything else? It actually controls the amount of water that goes to the amount of coffee that you're making. Um, yeah. And if you do it properly, which is basically to just use small amounts of boiling water or quite hot water and just pour it on top slowly slowly and just go around trying to get as much of that coffee as possible because the idea is you're trying to use all those coffee grains that are inside the pot okay because some people will just pour it on top and just wait for the level to go down yeah 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 which is what happens with the um french press right exactly what you want to do is you want to really get all that coffee to use you don't yeah. want any dry spots or anything like that no you want to do it slowly and sort of do it that's where the showmanship comes around because you can do it at home with a couple of friends around yeah. and you can like put it in the middle look, of the table that look sort all of professional thing. like yeah. float around and stuff and really just pouring water on top of your coffee and then the coffee so that that method would bring all the the naturals or flavors of of the blend of coffee that you're using right absolutely absolutely a lot of um, a lot of bristles out there and a lot of people that really appreciate coffee that's the way that they're drinking it uh, for example even tell you a lot of suppliers when I meet with some suppliers that yeah. sell me coffee that's how we would taste it they'll bring their own V60 they'll bring all the blends that they're trying to sell me and and we go from there we we'll try it right there they'll make a V60 for me and we try it it's actually it's really nice it's a, it's a really nice clean easy way to drink your coffee there's not many impurities uh, you, can, you can really have a taste of the coffee and see whichever flavors it comes to it because then some some blends will be a little bit fruitier it will be maybe uh, have like chocolate tones or caramel tones or toffee tones 
and you can really taste it in that way. So All it's right. very clear taste. Why and why you shouldn't use a mocha? And this is something that we were talking about just now. Sort of, we agreed to disagree. Yeah. So why? Why? Because a lot of people at home would have a mocha. You know, the kind of old style. I, w I call it the Italian sort of coffee machine. But why would someone, or what is not recommended according to what you think of not using a mocha machine? I, I just, I just, I hate the taste. I don't. I'm not sure how to do it. I mean, here's the thing. I would use it if you really put a lot of research into it. Yeah. If you get someone that really knows how to do it, go on YouTube, find someone that really knows how to make the best possible coffee in a mocha um, and, and go from there. Um, I would just say it's a lack of control. If you can control the amount of quantity of coffee that you're putting inside against the amount of water that you're putting inside, if you don't know your ratios, it's yeah. like making a cake, right? You need to know how much yeast you're putting inside, you need to know how much flour you're putting inside. If you're putting just random amounts and just like, yeah, yeah. Well, that will go, your cake won't grow in the oven, will yeah. it? So that, and I guess the, the, the blend also makes a difference Absolutely. when you're using it. So Absolutely. some blends might need, I don't know, some different temperatures or amount of water. I don't know. Absolutely. That's when the manufacturer instructions really come in handy. Some of them, they, they will let you know how is this coffee better drunk and what method. It'll even tell you is this coffee appropriate to have an espresso shot out of it. Is it better for V60? Is it better for any other style uh, for a friend, okay. for a French, uh, French press or a mocha or whatever, th there will be that option. They will let you know. Um, okay. So I would choose something that's adequate. I do believe that most of the time what end up happening is they'll have like a dark French roast, which is like a really bitter, strong coffee, something like that's what Starbucks sort of uses. Yeah. Which is bitter. I don't okay. like it. It's like most of the flavors just go away the, 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 the more you roast it. Some people would prefer that. Yeah. Some people would say that I'm completely idiotic for saying such a thing. I, that's how what I believe. That okay. You just lose all this flavor from it. So I would go medium range in terms of lightness. And like it's not something that's basically like not cooked and not like a French dark roast, which is completely overcooked and greasy. Something in between. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So and for those people that want to make a a milky sort of uh, coffee at home, what would you say would be the best way to add milk? Yeah. to to coffee so to do that i know for a fact that there are very cheap very cheap machines out there that will do a reasonable job um, i'll say these machines you can buy them second hand for like five ten pounds and so can... we're talking about a coffee of one of the fourth or machines yeah, yeah yeah it's a steamer right yeah, they, that's they, what they're called they're very they're very small and they have an espresso uh, group head so you can actually put pour an espresso out of it and then they have a really small steam ones that you can use to froth the milk yeah those steam ones, then again, they're not the best. They're not like a professional, like 10,000, 20,000 coffee machines, obviously. But they, they can make some... Decent. Of, yeah, some decent milk. This. All you need to do is have some technique into it. Yeah. How do you do that? So, most of all, it's when I when I give coffee trainings, these are three sort of steps that I go for. So, first of all, you need to froth. Second of all, you need to mix. And, second, and third of all, you need to... Um, heat the milk right in that order so when you're making the milk in that little jug right yeah what you want to do is you want to froth it straight away so you want to add air inside the milk how do you do that you just keep the top or like the very tip of the frothed steam ones yeah. right at the top so that just makes that sound yeah which means it's adding like air into the mixture yeah. you're literally changing the molecular content of the milk okay and and making it like changing it in a way um, it will just make it creamier like it will just create that froth on top what do you do next once you got that and you feel comfortable with it what you need to do is you need to get that steam on inside the milk again so now you what you need to recreate is a centrifugal force in your jug so basically in a very fancy way of saying it you just need to make the milk go around yeah that's it as soon as the milk starts making this movement yeah the milk is basically getting together. It's, it's mixing in with itself. So you have okay. the froth so and the So you've got the steam and the heat yeah. mixing within the milk, inside yeah. the milk, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And as long as you make it in that order, you'll get a really good milk. Why? Because you add the, you add the air onto it, you get a froth, then you mix it all together so it's really nice and creamy. And then you just hold it until you, until you can't hold the jug anymore. Once you can't hold the jug anymore... Because it's too hot. Yeah, that means that it's drinking temperature so you stop it okay. and that will be a really nice silky sweet 
milk, right? Yeah, because we, we were talking before uh, we started the video that you mentioned that the ideal temperature to uh, warm up the milk is 75 degrees, which yeah. is the point where it's still sweet, yeah. but it hasn't separated. Because yeah. if you take it to the boiling point, then the milk kind of separates the fat and, and everything. And if you put, if, and then, and when it's cold milk, then it's too sweet. So 75 is kind of the ideal temperature where you get, it's still sweet, but it's hot enough to Ideally, actually yeah. put. There's a lot of sweet proteins in the milk, and, and if, if you go overboard with the temperature, th those will, will die, and, and it won't be as sweet as you'd have uh, maybe anywhere else. Now, I know some people, they drink tea their entire lives. They're used to drinking, I don't know, like instantaneous coffee, which is made with boiling water. So, obviously, your temperature um, sort of... Uh, you can hold a bigger temperature in your mouth. You're yeah. used to having a really hot coffee. So you'd go and you ask, oh, can I have extra hot coffee? Don't. Really give the chance to the barista because I promise you, if you had a, re a really nice uh, warm milk, you'll be a lot sweeter. You probably won't put sugar inside because it's so sweet. Yeah. Right? So you avoid that extra step. Uh, also, the hotter you get, there's a bigger chance of it just becoming clunky. Uh, it just becomes little clunks of milk on top and you can literally then just eat it with a fork and you really don't want that, it's horrible. <laughs> I, I see that done a lot and even even at, when I was working as a barista, which I'm not anymore, but back in the day when people would ask me for like, we, we used to call it the volcanic hot milk and it's just you're holding it there and you're not even touching the jug and the jug is like just overflowing everywhere and just looks yeah. like a volcano like sort of the milk yeah, is like I've pouring out of the jug i've seen that in some coffee shops when they're frothing the milk and the milk is just splashing out of the jug and i'm thinking yeah mm, wanna, i wasn't sure whether that was normal or not but it was splashing that. out you want to avoid that unless some people really want that that's fine yeah of course i just course. i just i usually I would just ask a lot, like, are you sure this is what you, is, is, you know, this is what you're going to have clunks on top, is that fine? Okay. Some people just like it that way. Okay. And <laughs> how would you, how would you, what would you recommend on how can we store coffee? Because there's a lot of debate of whether you should put it in the fridge, you should not put it in the fridge, you should put it in a, a sealed container, you should leave it in the bag. You know, what would you say? Yeah. This From your experience, what would you, how can we store um, coffee to keep that aroma, the flavor? Because I have to say, every time I buy coffee and I open the coffee bag, I love that first aroma that yeah. you get when you open. And once you open the bag and then you, it kind of disappears yeah, after a day or so. It's, it's sort of concentrated in that bag in a way. So you get that really nice big whiff, but it, it should contain that aroma still after a week. Um, the ideal way to store it, I mean, maybe it'll create a bit of controversy, but I would say it wouldn't be in the fridge. Uh, I would say... Not, not to put it in the fridge. Not to put it in the not fridge. Not to put it in the I mean, fridge. I, I, I would never do it. That is, seems a bit weird. But I would just always listen to your supplier, right? So if your supplier, it will bring instructions on the bag, whatever sort of blend you're buying, they will let you know. If they believe that that blend is really, is, is really should be kept on an ambient temperature, in a dark place, put it on an ambient temperature in a dark place. If they say that it's in the fridge, well, maybe give it a try, see what happens. Um, listen to suppliers. The suppliers, they have a huge passion. Um, the, the coffee roasters, they, they go out of their way to buy these amazing blends and to prepare them and to roast them in their own roasteries. They know what they're talking about. They're some of the most knowledgeable people that I've actually talked to in terms of coffee. So listen to them. If they say it should be kept here, listen to them just leave it there i would just give the tip of avoid hair hair uh, sealed containers yeah because your coffee won't be able to breathe something you realize and it's quite a curiosity is that if you go out and you find like especially if it's a, a beans uh, a bag that's with beans so nothing that's been grinded yet it actually brings a little hole for mm -hmm. the beans to breathe mm -hmm. the beans do need to have that that breathing process to make sure that they're going to contain that aroma and they, they're going to stay good right yeah. so if you basically pop it in a hair seal container you're killing them you're, you're not letting them breathe yeah so that you want to avoid that as much as possible yeah. so basically keep the coffee in the bag where it comes from yeah. that's 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 the best thing i think uh, we were talking about it before and you referred to that they have like a little sometimes they have a little seal yeah like a little a piece of glue that just seals them together again yeah, yeah that's you'll seal it nothing's really going to go in but at the same time it's not hair tight so air will still be able to go in there the beans are still be able to breed it's the best of both worlds excellent excellent and so 
would you be able to give sort of a little recipe of, of I don't know, how to make a good coffee at home? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I would love to. Yeah, you were you were talking before. I <laughs> just a cold latte, a nice tea, a nice coffee. What were you yeah, saying? A nice latte. A nice. Ice, ice latte. Ice latte. I think I, I say that to all my friends because, especially when they're making coffee for me, uh, because I know there's it's it's a, it's a lot of time that you need to practice and understand, and you need to have that passion to be driven into making a good coffee. And you might not have the knowledge now, and if you don't, making a nice latte is actually very very easy. What do you do? You just get a glass, pop a few ice cubes inside, pour cold milk on top. So basically, you just get cold milk on ice. And you, if you have uh, either a mocha or a uh, espresso machine, I would say an espresso machine is easier. Just take a shot of uh, espresso and just pour it on top. Mix it all together, it will look very pretty and it will just taste very nice. Why does it taste nice? Because if you don't have the knowledge or the practice to froth milk correctly, then you're just sort of eliminating that out of the way. You're just making cold, cold coffee. And I love it. It's super sweet, it's super nice if it's hot. It's perfect for a hot day. Uh, you can even drop it with a honey in there, or I would say, which is the best. A lot of people a... put vanilla, like uh, some yeah. vanilla flavoring or something. If, if that's what you like, I really like the taste of coffee, so I would yeah. like that. Something that I love when people do that, I've seen a lot of coffee places now doing it, which is putting agave syrup in it. Ah, uh, yes, yes. So yeah. agave really mixes in with the with the espresso, and um, you don't doesn't take away the the coffee flavor. Um, and, but it's still at the same time keeps that sweetness, which and it adds a little bit need. of other extra flavor or something. Yeah. I, I just I wouldn't put sugar on it because because it's cold. So if you put sugar, it will become chunky. So you'll drinking and you yeah. can like bite into the sugar. Yeah, yeah. So you really just put a bit of agave or honey or anything, and it'll be brilliant. Try it at home. So and what easy. about what about a hot for a hot coffee? For a hot coffee. I know we 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 were talking about this before, and we were kind of agree to disagree. Yeah. But what would you say if you want to? You know, for someone that wants to have a hot coffee, because I'm one of those that has a hot <laughs> yeah, coffee. Yeah, I get, I get it. Um, <laughs> you have two avenues when you're going for coffee, right? So I would say you're either going for an espresso-based drink, which is probably what I would drink, or an Americano-based drink, which was probably what you drink. Not an actual Americano, yeah, but yeah. Sort, sort of like a, um, an extracted, in, a, in so like a V60, basically. Yeah. Um, so that's the two avenues that you go. If you have, if you want to have a latte, that's really easy. I think we kind of covered it here. Um, looking to what the manufacturer asks you to say, uh, most of the time it's like one or two spoons of, of the of the coffee into like a group head. And if you have a cheap coffee machine at home, quick shot of espresso, the milk, like we said, how you should froth it. That's a latte. Just mix it in, done. Very easy. And if you're going the other direction, I would keep on saying V60. V60, it costs like five pounds on Amazon right now. It's very cheap. Uh, I will leave I will leave the, the link to a V60 down in the description below so you can go and check it out. It's so cheap. I don't have one. I'm so curious now to, to get one of those because so nice. we've been talking about this yeah. before we started the video for about two hours and all this V60 thing. I've never used one, but I think I'm going to get one now because I'm too curious to see how it it's works. It's nice, it's quick and it's upgradable. So. You start with that five pound piece to just make the coffee inside and then at some point you realize that you need a better way to control the temperature of your water. You can buy a proper kettle uh, or just a, a container to hold your water and then you can buy a better V60s, better containers, containers that read this, that. So it starts from a very small place and then you can upgrade it as you go along. Yeah. As, as, as your taste develops and as your interest to coffee develops, you can yeah. then develop with it. And it's just so easy. And think about it, you can just take it to your office and be like cooler than everyone else. Just pull out a V60 from your backpack and just like, Start making coffee. Yeah, and you can make coffee for the entire office. Right there, right yeah. then. Yeah, it would be the coolest, but you'd be like loved straight away. Yeah. And if you give me coffee, I'll love you straight away, so it's fine. <laughs> Listen, what would you say is your favorite blend? My favorite blend? I know this is this is kind of like a very wide subject oh, when so it comes wide. to coffee. So wide. But what would you say is your favorite blend? I have my favorite coffee. What is your favorite blend? Well, I don't know if it's a blend, but I am biased. For me, it has to be Venezuelan coffee. <laughs> yeah. You were talking about <laughs> it has to be Venezuelan coffee. I sort of, I sort of believe that if, if you grow with that culture as well, then you're more likely to enjoy it because that's that's how you've grown it. it. Not only does it have the taste, which might be amazing, but it also has that that sort of reminds me of home. Sort yeah, of thing. it's what, what would you call it? What's the word for it? It's um, oh, I forgot the word for it. Never mind. Nostalgia, nostalgia. Oh, the nostalgia. So yeah. it has a nostalgia yeah. feel to it as well. 
I'm completely opposite. I, I hate Portuguese coffee. Um, <laughs> I think I, I think that we have some really good baristas and some really good espressos. Unfortunately, we use terrible coffee. We use cheap coffee. It's not very good. So okay, people from Portugal. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Um, He's the one saying it. Yeah, I'm not saying anything. I'll fight you on this. I'll fight you on this. Fine. Um, I do believe that my favorite blend uh, usually comes from Guatemala. It does depend because it depends on on the type of harvest. It depends on what it rained that year. Yeah, it rain it's, it's just so so wide. Yeah. But most of the Arabica uh, stuff that comes from Guatemala, I usually enjoy it so much. And it's not something that I would drink every day because it's a very fruity sort of blend. Sometimes has a bit of a like some caramel tones into it. Is it, is it into sweet? It. it is sweet, yeah. Because it, it I is think... very fruity as well. So it's very, it's a bit acidic. So it just sort of fills your mouth a little bit. But it's it's very nice. Because I think I think enjoyable. coffee that comes from that side of the world might be very similar. It, yeah. Country to country, because Venezuelan coffee is very sweet. Yeah. In fact, every time I've I've made it for non-Venezuelan people, the first thing I get is, oh, it's very sweet. There you go. I, I, I do believe you do, you do find a little bit of that, um, especially if the countries are very connected. So Venezuela, you have Colombia as well. Colombian. Does have, does Venezuela have a sweet... is similar to yeah. Colombian yeah. coffee because Absolutely. you know. Then you have Brazil. Brazil is also sort of similar to Guatemalan coffee, um, which is probably my top two. If, if I would have to pick, I would always go for the Guatemalan and then Brazilian. possibly go for the Brazilian. Yeah, but it, it does depend. It depends on everything. I've had I've had some amazing um, sort of Eastern Eastern coffee as well and it's sort of something very peculiar that you wouldn't have normally but it, yeah. it does it is nice so it, it's all about that blend yeah I, yeah I am still interested that is this blend where they feed the beans to a monkey and then the no, monkey no no it's not a monkey it's kind of is it a chimpanzee no it's I don't know it's a different I, I, term yeah I know I which know, one yeah. I know it has fur I know, and it I walks know. like a monkey yeah no I know <laughs> I know, I know which one you're talking about. Yeah. That when then he pulls, yeah. then you get the the bean. And then and then because yeah, of their it's supposed to be the, the most yeah. expensive coffee in the world. I can't remember what the name of it. I need to go and taste it. Yeah, I think you, you, I think you can great. you can get it in London. You can get it in yeah. I don't know Harrods or that sort of places. You can get it there. I need I need to go and try. It. I need to go and try. Yeah, it. I'm we're very we curious. So yeah, that's it. Uh, I think in the end, it's very important that you just feel comfortable about your coffee. If there's something that you like, just explore it a bit more. Look around, see what you can improve, see what other people are doing, taste it. Um, I've, I've, I just do believe that your favorite coffee might be just around the corner. Just try different things, right? Yeah, sure, sure. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video and you got something out of it. Especially, I'm really going to check out the V16. I'm going to leave the link below as well. And I'll see you uh, next week with another video. And thanks to Rafael for coming That's today and, and, and talk about coffee. And we're probably going to continue to talk about coffee after this video because we started two, two hours ago. <laughs> And we're going to continue gonna after. Going. It's going to keep going. So many fights. So, <laughs> so many agree to disagree. Yeah. Cold coffee, hot coffee. <laughs> anyway, guys, I'll see you next week. And remember to subscribe if you're not subscribed yet. And if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And I'll see you next time. You can also follow us. Something's awesome. So if, if you go on, your food on Instagram. Yeah, if you go for me, just go on YouTube. Something awesome, you'll find it straight away. It's like the gold. I'll leave. Thing. I'll leave the link as well in the description below. Oh. So <laughs> anyway, guys, I'll see you next week. Hey guys, I'm Morella, and welcome to the channel. And this week we're talking old coffee, and for that I invited my friend Rafael, who's a professional barista from Awesome Things, to something awesome. tell us. <laughs> <laughs> awesome Things is actually so much better that I actually no. Let's yeah. go with Awesome Things. I'm gonna change the name of the channel. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> awesome Things. <laughs> Nice to meet you. Okay. <laughs> Let's start it over again. Some some things of it's very it's awkward. Some things awesome. No, something awesome. It's some things I think is because of the Instagram we must have not been able to get the yeah. the the thing yeah. so we got a really weird Instagram hashtag. But. Okay. Okay. okay.